we are going to read a book that you've probably never seen before called My Heart is Like a Zoo. My Heart is Like a Zoo. Eager as a beaver, steady as a yak. Hopeful as a hungry heron fishing for a snack. When I was thinking about being a writer, I loved children's books. I loved picture books. And I think picture books have a place, have sort of a place in the art world. But I didn't think I had a voice for children's books. And a lot of my books, they may have looked childish, but they were fairly sophisticated in concept. Who knows what a seal sounds like? Okay, let's all do it. Ready? Good. It's one of the special things I noticed about being an author that all of my books have meaning for me that's different than what it means for other people. And it's sort of nice. It's sort of a happy thing. And often I don't know what the meaning is until I'm almost done with the book. Cool as a penguin. Crafty as a fox. For me, it was always important to do both writing and illustrating because I'm really interested in the relationship between the words and the images and the way they play off each other. Sometimes they contradict each other. And it allows in the illustrations, for example, for me to do illustrations that are very abstract. The first book was My Heart is Like a Zoo. It's, it's the first book I published and it's the first one I sent to my to my agent, and I sent her this copy, which a lot of it is similar. It's got some of the same pages. I actually started off as a child wanting to be a writer of some kind, but I am dyslexic. So by the time I got to college, I just couldn't keep up enough with the English classes that I wanted to take. So I went into the sciences, and when I was getting ready for graduate school, I discovered this thing called graphic design and started to do design work. My wife and I had a graphic design firm for 30 years, specializing in visual identity, which is basically logos and all sorts of other aspects that come with that. I think that I learned 80% of what I know as an author illustrator through my work as a designer. As a designer, I was very interested in just beautiful, flat color. So when I started doing children's books, I felt that look was sort of corporate. And I wanted to get texture into my work. And yet the textures are not real busy. It's really important to me that you see the shape before you start looking at the intricacies of the texture. They just add depth but they don't become front and center. And so if I draw a frog, I would like someone to see that it's also a square and a rectangle and a dot. So I like, I like things that are just the, mater the materials, the colors, the lines, and the shapes. So for Frankencran, I cut the shapes out of black paper and scanned them into the computer and colored them in the computer. And then I would build the characters. So this is his long coat. This is royal blue and his tall hat. I find myself playing with shapes, for example. I have a lot of cut paper and a lot of painted paper, and I just enjoy playing with those things and seeing what they look like to me. With Perfect Square, I would start with a painted piece of paper and then either cut it or tear it or do whatever I need to do to make it work within the story. I always try to put 
all of my spreads of a book up so I can see them all at once because it's such it's so so hard to see how they relate to each other and that's part of finding the rhythm of the book. I can really start to tell just by looking at the whole thing spread out if there's something that's not going right. Just having that tactile part of the experience gives you more information about it. What are you doing? I'm making a hole in our stump so we can see what's outside. Like a window. Sweet. Wait, what if there's an aardvark out there? Aardvarks are gray and sneaky. So I didn't want to be a dyslexic author illustrator. It doesn't seem to influence my books except that I am an introspective person and I like to share that with kids. And I think there is something very special about processing things internally. And you come up with things that maybe other people wouldn't come up with. Aardvarks turn orange when they're hungry for carpenter ants, you know. <gasps> Goodness! Well, I keep doing this because I just think it's the best possible thing that you could do. I and mean, when you have an imagination, you have all, this, all of these things that you would like to share. And to be able to do that is a very uh, special gift, I think. Grape juice tastes good with ants, you know. <laughs> and the other one says, arg. And that's the end of it. It's the orange aardvark. Thank you, hat wearers. You did a great job.